What's good? This is Sterling Shepard, and this is Second Wind Podcast. Before we get into this next episode, we want to give a huge shout out to all of our fans and supporters of the podcast. Please follow us on all socials as we continue to grow this and bring on great guests with amazing stories as well. What's good, y'all? Welcome to another episode of the Second Win Podcast. I am Geo James, whatever you want to call me. Make sure you follow me on the gram. Here You're with my cute. brother. Follow me. My right hand, my left hand, Already. my ace, Mr. J Already. Mills. Back again. Already. And we done double back on our brother, man. Young Chef. Young Chef in the building. Chef, whatever <laughs> you, you want to call him, man. One of the greatest <laughs> New York Giants, man, yes, Mr. Sterling Shepard is on the show, brother. I appreciate you getting on, brother. Yes, appreciate, appreciate you, brother. Y'all boys. Y'all know y'all like my brothers. Man. Already, yeah, man. man. We straight to it. First things first, man. Long, grueling season. It's over. Yeah. How's your body feel? How's your mental feel? Like, how are you overall? To be honest, I ain't play that much, dog. <laughs> nah, <laughs> nah, so my body, my body feels good, dog. Like, obviously, you go throughout the week. And the weeks of preparation, practice, and everything can take a toll on your body. But, I mean, I came out clean, got a couple of jammed fingers, but I'll take those over the other injuries that I've yeah, been through any day. Any day. People so. don't realize, like, every time you step on the field, even if it's not a game, bro, like, right. practice, you see people get hurt in practice, bro, season uh, ending, like, every yeah. time you get out of a season healthy, it's a blessing. Nah. And, like, I mean, you know that firsthand. Yeah, bro, big blessing. I mean, like you said, I've been through two major injuries, bro. And a lot of people don't come back from those, especially mm -hmm. the Achilles. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, man, that that off season is like no other. Whenever you're going through a major injury, no so ass recovered like Wolverine though. Yeah, like, what yo, he was back bro. in a couple Quick. A couple weeks. Nah. <laughs> I never seen him. I never seen someone recover as fast as you do. Nah, bro. I mean, I was just constantly working. Like even like the little stuff I could do, like fresh out the hospital. I was using a, a dang band, Damn. just trying to get my leg moving. Like yeah. whatever it was, I asked the doctor, what is like, what can I do like any day mm -hmm. to get me better? And he was like, man, you can keep working this. You know, you don't want to work yourself too hard, but little stuff like this will help you along the way. So yeah, I did it. For sure. You one of the only dudes that I know from Oklahoma, right? Yeah. And you, you know, you hit that little Oklahoma dance. Yeah. Like you got the Southern hospitality. I come in the crib, I eat the fruit snacks, I eat the Doritos, yeah. like you let me rock, you know what I'm saying? And Oklahoma oozes off you, you show the pride. What does it mean to be from Oklahoma? Like, what does it mean to you? Yeah, man, I mean, it's just made me who I am today. Yeah. Uh, and you know, like I say, the Oklahoma way is like being selfless, bro. Mm -hmm. And just trying to bring others up and helping other people around you. And I think like, I've carried that truth through my whole life, bro. Yeah. Like, I always look out for other people more than I do myself. I like to say, and uh, yeah, it's just it's just in me, dog. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you play football at Oklahoma, is it like a thing that everybody got to know that that rap sitting sideways that joint? Sit and you know what? If you don't know it, everybody gonna look at you crazy. Yeah, so you gotta. So know you it. better know it. I but like, I, I know people. Like y'all know the rap, bro. Yeah. yeah. Like, like I've been in the league for so long, <laughs> but I have dudes that come from the East Coast and they'll rap the whole verse. It's like if you come from down south, right? Mm -hmm. Or you play at Oklahoma, any down south team, bro. <laughs> You, you gotta, gotta know the rap. Yeah, you gotta, is that yo? Yeah, that yeah. shit went viral. Boy, Malcolm Kelly. Yeah. And, and you being from Oklahoma, like. Is it just football and riding horses? What y'all do out there, man? Bruh, Dip. it's really not Dip. that. Yeah. <laughs> we might throw in a can from time to time. For might, sure. Hey, look, I, I, hey, I'm recovering, dog. <laughs> right, 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 right. You know right. what I mean? We don't see this. But yeah, man, I mean, it's not much to do, but mm -hmm. it's like a very family-oriented place. Like, bro, I love growing up there. Uh, it's just it's just all about family. Like I said, people are so like giving and uh helpful, bro. It's yeah. like maybe you don't want to be there in your in your twenties because mm -hmm. it's not really much going on, nightlife and stuff like that. But like as you get older and you're just like all about your family, mm -hmm. it's definitely a place you want to raise your kids and stuff like that. Yeah. And speaking of family, you know, you come from a long lineage of people that played at Oklahoma. You had mm -hmm. two uncles, and you know, most importantly, your father Derek mm -hmm. also played at Oklahoma. You How don't use lineage, boy. Come on, you, but like, I mean, you my always get on here. here. He Boys, get on here and get to using big they words. Try to act like Shep. He like Shep. Big Shep. words. Shep. Like, you don't use no lineage. Big, big words. Lineage. Ain't it crazy <laughs> on this joint? Lineage. Come on, you heard me say that a couple times. My man in his bag. But you come from a long lineage of, you know, people that played at Oklahoma. Like I said, your dad playing at Oklahoma and you had two uncles. How did it feel to con continue that tradition wearing number three? Like what that mean to you to rep that shepherd name and, you know, yeah. make, make your family proud? Man, it meant a lot to me, bro. Like 
my father passed when I was six. So like I always wanted to carry on a legacy and yeah, um, yeah man, I always wanted to be like him. So, mm -hmm. you know, I always wanted to go play at Oklahoma. I always wore the number three just to remember him. And uh, yeah, and I, 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 by the grace of God, I've been able to follow his footsteps in every way. Um, you know, I like to say I'm a little, I did it a little bit better. <laughs> For sure. But, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think that he would want it any other way. Like, yeah. man, I, I feel like he would be proud with what I've accomplished and, uh, you know, the places that I've been. And right. for you, did you ever feel like there was a lot of pressure or expectation to live up to that? You know, being that you've seen your family, like they were ballers and it's like, you're next up. Did you feel like you had to do better or be the same or, you know, following those footsteps? Not really, bro, because, you know, when my father passed, like my mom never put pressure on me to do anything, dog. It was like in me. Mm -hmm. Like I just wanted to do everything. Yeah, I wanted born to, with I, it. Yeah, bro. I was just born with it. And so I never really put any extra pressure on myself. Maybe when I first came into Oklahoma. Yeah. But it's like it's it's like that at every stage. You put pressure on yourself like, man, can I compete with the dudes at this level? Mm -hmm. Even going into high school, I was like, man, how am I going to how am I going to match up? But after them first couple of days at practice, you like, I'm here. I'm doing this. Like I'm I'm him. Yeah. Yeah, like I can I can get this accomplished. So yeah, bro, it was like that at every stage. When I first got to college, that's the way I thought. Yeah. And then first practice, first couple of practice, I was balling. I was like, man, I, I I got this. Yeah. So did you feel like you had to like grow up and like mature really quickly? Yeah, bro, I did for sure. Like, uh, you know, when my father passed, I didn't know what to do. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, my mom was like. She was my rock, right. but at the same time, I I would ask questions. I'd be like, "Man, who's gonna protect the house?" Like, mm -hmm. I and and it, I felt like it fell on me. Mm -hmm. And she was like, "No, nah, we'll get a we'll get an alarm system." But my mom helped me out there. I mean, she she played both roles yeah. to the T, dog. And so she helped me, you know, relax on that and not put so much weight on my shoulders. But just as a man, as a boy like talking to other men that my dad knew, like they, they let me know, you know, you got to hold the household down. Just you naturally. Got, yeah, just yeah. Naturally, naturally, bro. That's just how it goes. And uh, yeah, I mean, it forced me to grow up a little bit quicker than probably I would have. Yeah, for And sure. that's why I asked, you know, the expectations and the pressure just being that young, man, you don't even know. Yeah. You don't know what you don't know. And it's like, you know, when you're in that situation, especially as black men, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's hard. Learn yeah. as you go. Yeah, learn you as just, you go, yeah. you know? Yeah, bro. And yeah. at, you know, after your career at Oklahoma, you get drafted 2016, mm -hmm. you were the longest tenure giant at one point, right? Yeah. You was you was old Shep at one point. Yeah. But you got the opportunity to play with some amazing talent, some Hall of Famers like Eli. Oh, you play with Say, you play with Victor Cruz, like dogs. Yeah. What did you learn from each one of them? Like, what did you take away from Eli? What did you take away from Oh? What did yeah. you take away from Say, Victor, like dudes like that? Yeah. I mean, Eli and Victor both. Uh, and oh, all of them taught me like how to be a pro. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, he if he would tell you, he'd be like, "Man, look, do as I say, don't do as I do." Because you know, he I mean, he he would fall, and he would be like, "Man, I don't want you to make these same mistakes." Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he would teach me in that in that aspect. Victor and and Eli just taught me how to be like like a straight pro dog, mm -hmm. like really handling business on and off the field like and, and not to say that oh didn't do that as well he did that as well but you know he came with a little bit more yeah yeah and so <laughs> e and and uh vic man they just like they they were always about their business bro right. mm -hmm. and so like I, I i would say that's the reason why i'm in the position that i am today like mm -hmm. leading boys right that that just came from watching eli and, and watching him, how he commanded the room, bro, mm -hmm. and everybody respected him, not only just because of his play, but the way that he handled his day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. um, and then Victor, like, you know, you talk about off-the-field stuff, bro. We talked about off-the-field stuff all the time yeah. on, like, what he was setting up for future plans. And You see it now, you, Yeah, you see it, though. Mm -hmm. And so... Like, yeah, I, I, it's a big shout out and thanks to those guys, man, because I wouldn't be where I am today and, and be thinking the way that I think if it wasn't for them and watching them. Yeah. And that's like, like you said, that's a testament to you because I've been with you for a while now, like yeah. a couple of years and the young dudes come in and they like, yo, Shep taught me this, yo, yo Shep, Shep taught yeah. me that. And yeah. like you talking about how other people sat you down and kind of taught yeah, you to, that way. And now it's, it's cool to see the kind of the culture going in the right direction because yeah. people like you, people like Eli, people like Victor, people like, oh. Yep, yeah, for sure. I mean, like, even all the way down to, 
hazing. Yeah. Like nobody really hazed me. I mean, Vic made me go get his helmet a couple of times. You <laughs> right, know what I'm right, saying? Right. Yeah. But it wasn't nothing crazy. Like if you ask stories from guys before that, mm -hmm. I mean, they was getting hazed. Like Victor was getting hazed, but they kind of switched it up. But I learned that too. I was like, man, I'm not about to haze these young dudes. That rookie like, dinner? Yeah. yeah that, I, you know, that, that when it crazy. comes to the rookie dinner or something, <laughs> I may relax on you a little bit, take a little bit portion of the bill. Right. Y'all might make me throw my car what? for the rookie young, dinner, guys. 50 hey, bands. Yeah, yeah. 50 <laughs> bands. Hey, everybody better pitch in. Pitch in. <laughs> what up, everyone? This is your favorite host, James, from the Second Wind Podcast. We're going to forget about that other guy. Here to tell you guys about our new sponsor, Factor. My New Year's resolution was to one, save money, two, eat healthy, and three, get in shape. As you can see, it's paying off. Factor's ready to eat meals are chef crafted and dietitian approved with over 35 meals a week. So they have keto, they have vegan, they have calorie smart. There's no excuse. Really, every single thing you need comes with Factor. Factor makes your meals quick healthy and super cost effective. So, I mean, it's never been more easy to stay on top of your diet and stay on top of your goals. There's no more cooking. There's no more cleaning. There's no more shopping. All that stuff is out the window. And my favorite thing about factor are the smoothies. I mean, they're just, I mean, they're so good. It feels like you're cheating on your diet, but they're also so healthy that you're actually not. Now, y'all know I'm a smooth talker, so I had to go get y'all 50% off. Go to factormeals.com slash win50 and use code win50 to get 50% off. Again, that's code win50 at factormeals.com slash win50 and get 50% off, courtesy of Second Win. Enjoy the show. And can you talk about, you said being a pro, but I also think, as you know, being in this New York media, being in New York, being a pro in New York and being a pro in another market is two different things. Mm -hmm. So what are some things that you had to learn about being in this market, you know, saying the right things, constructing yourself the right way? Like, how did you learn to do that? Yeah, man. I mean, when I first came in, yeah, it is different. And, mm -hmm. and when I first came in, like the media department set me down. The media department set me down. Yeah, and they were like, "Man, this is like no other place. This media, they'll get at you." Yeah, so they nitpick everything. Yeah, yeah, you got to really watch what you say. And it made me nervous at first. Uh, but to be honest, man, I just treated it like everything else. I'm not somebody that's going to be saying anything too crazy, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, or or doing anything to put me in a position to have to clean up something, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, not too often. I mean, I did, <laughs> right. I did have uh, an instance or two, but uh, I, I rarely put myself in that position to have to do that. And that, like, that's what being a pro is. Mm -hmm. And so, like I said, watching those guys, that kind of helped me mm -hmm. um, navigate that aspect of it. But I mean, it's the media capital of the world, dog. Yeah. Like, if you want to get a message out, positive or negative, you could do that. And this, this is the place to do it. Mm -hmm. No, you definitely carry yourself like a pro for sure. Um, you know, last season didn't go the way that you wanted, mm -hmm. but you also got to see, you know, an undrafted kid, you know, come in at quarterback and kind of do, you know, a kind of Lynn Sanity run. You know what I mean? He yeah. was balling, won three games in a row. Like, you know, City was on fire. I go to the Green Bay game, everyone's throwing up this. Yeah, you yeah. know, like, can you talk about, you know, being around Tommy and, you know, that span and how that affected you guys in the locker room and the guys? Yeah, bro, it's crazy. But, like, Tommy's like a quiet dude. Right. And, and you don't really see that, but Tommy is a quiet dude. So when he first came in, I'm like, man, who is this kid? But his dad worked on my house. He did the plumbing in my house. Oh, really? So That's his, my world. Yeah, his pops did the Damn. plumbing in my house. And I remember him saying, you know, my son, he plays Syracuse or whatever. And, uh... I was like, oh man, that's what's up. That's dope. Right, right, right. And then lo and behold, he's on my on, on the team with me. Yeah. Uh, but like I said, he didn't say that much. And so I'm like, man, can this kid really ball? And right. he only got limited reps at practice. So you mm -hmm. really didn't get to see him spin. But preseason rolled around and you just saw how calm and cool and collected he was. Yeah. Poised. And like, bro, yeah. this dude got confidence. Like confidence <laughs> through the roof. <laughs> through the roof. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And whenever you got a guy like that in the huddle, I don't even care, bro. That gives everybody else confidence. Mm -hmm. And so when when DJ went down and Ty went down, yeah, we knew Tommy was up, but it was like watching spin. Fuck right, yeah. right, like right. he he told he told me, watch out, I'm about to go crazy. Christ, I'm like, I hard. love, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's hard, <laughs> that's bro. You, hard. That's what you want to hear. So yeah. he did it. And he even for it. him, that's like, it's not a knock to him. In a, in a situation like him, bro, you got everything to win. Yeah. You got, fuck it. You got yeah. nothing to lose, bro. Nah, I mean, yeah, everybody's looking at you like, ah, oh, third string quarterback, yeah. we in a bad position, whatever. Nah. He went at that spinning and got it. his three dubs. Yeah, absolutely. And, and dubs, hard. I don't care how you do it. Dubs are hard to come by in the league. Absolutely. Like, so.
Yeah, he did especially his thing. when you ain't see no defense before. Like you just yeah. out there. Right. Shit. Yeah. Man, the thing that I love about you the most is how you light up a room, right? Regardless of the situation, and that's important. Y'all, you've been on teams that weren't that great. You've been mm -hmm. on teams that were really good. But Shep is still Shep, you know? Like, you always get a good reaction out of Shep. You get good energy out of Shep. Even personally, like, you dealt with the Achilles. You dealt with the ACL. You dealt with multiple concussions. And it's like, Shep is still Shep. You always going to get a light out of Shep. He always going to bring happiness into a room. Absolutely. Where do you get that from? Because that's contagious. And, like, that's important for life. And it's important mm -hmm. for sports. Where do you get something like that from? Like, that attitude. I say my faith, bro. Yeah. To be completely honest to you, like, I look at all the situations in my life and, you know, situations where I was like, dang, man, how am I going to get through this? Even with my, my father passing, mm -hmm. I was like, man, how, how am I going to do this? Like, I don't have a, a father figure. I don't really have. My grandpa did what he did, but it's my grandpa. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's mm -hmm. a little different. It's not the same. Yeah. Um, But I always saw the light at the end of the tunnel, bro. So I was like, all these different areas in my life, you know, I made it through those. Mm -hmm. So... Any obstacle that's thrown in my way, I I know he's got me. Right. And so like that's that's where I was at with it, dog. I was like, the Achilles. Okay, now now let's let's get to work. Mm -hmm. Right, right, and, right. And I and I know I'm gonna come back better. Mm -hmm. And I was able to do that. Unfortunately, then the knee happened. But I'm not gonna change who I am, bro. You got a choice every day that you wake up. It's like, am I gonna sit here and be mad at the world, mm -hmm. or am I gonna like shed light to everybody else? And like right. that's a, that's Oklahoma way, like. That's yeah. that's how I was raised, dog. Yeah. So it's just it's just in me. And it, it sometimes it's harder than it is said, but that's just all always the way that I lived and I know I know my guy got me, bro. Yeah. And so, you're a thousand percent correct on that. You actually just it's just funny because my mom said the same thing to me yesterday. It's like I've seen someone like you, I've seen you go through all these injuries and you're still the same. And my mom said something to me last week, like, you know, happiness is a choice. You choose to be happy. Mm -hmm. And I saw you every day. Same shit, same this, and that's hard regardless, brother. Like, I'm giving you your flowers. Like, mm -hmm. I'm proud of you because that's hard to do. Most people mentally would, you know, be under the rug, but you, your positive outlook on life is just very contagious. So I just want to say that just in general, yeah. bro. I'm proud yeah. of you. Appreciate you the epitome that, though. of, like, life is 10% what happens to you, 90% how you react to it. Yeah, yeah bro. You the one who really, like, <laughs> epitomized that saying. Yeah. What did you learn about yourself during all those things that you went through? Because you don't really know about yourself until your back is really against the wall and like for you to do, go through all that rehab and then come back and mm -hmm. then get hurt again it's like damn bro like bro. but you got to learn about yourself in that situation yeah bro and i think the number one thing that sticks out to me is patience mm -hmm. like i had to learn to be patient bro so many times where throughout that process i was like man i want to be able to do this i want to be able to do that right now right. but i had to I had to go back and be like, nah, let me be where my feet are. Mm -hmm. and, and to go along with the last point, like, I have so much to be blessed about, bro. So blessed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, like, nah, yeah. for real though, bro, I feel like sometimes a lot of people, they just focus on the negative. And like, and I'll do it too. Everybody does it. But if you could just take a step back and be like, man, let me talk about all the stuff that I that I that I'm grateful for mm -hmm. and all the things that are going my way in life. Like somebody's going through a way harder time than you. So yeah. I bro, if, if I catch myself going down that spiral, bro, I always bring it back and I'm like, man, I'm I'm blessed. Yeah. I got two beautiful girls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like you healthy. Man, I'm healthy. Great like, family. Like what, great what else did you like, ask for? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, bro. Yeah. Damn. Perspective. So I'm living my dream. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A whole bunch of stuff you can come up with if you just sit back and think about it. That's crazy. And that, that's perspective. Now that brings me to a yeah. saying. Like someone once told me one time I was complaining to them and they was like, if everyone in the world put all their problems into a pile, you would take yours back in a second. Yep. And mm -hmm. I was like, damn. Like yeah. they told me that and I was like, That's facts. That's facts. And that and that goes to another point, bro. You gotta keep people around you that mm -hmm. are like not gonna let you get into that point mm -hmm. yeah. like bro there's so many times even throughout the season like if i don't catch myself then i know one of my brothers will e yeah. either it's gonna be and, and two of my boys my my best friends on the team saquon and and then uh tyrod yeah mm -hmm. like it'd be times I'd, I'd be like man tyrod blah 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 he'd be like Man, I ain't even gonna sit here and let you do that today. Right. But it's like having friends like that because there's so many people that'll be sitting there like, yeah, man, it's messed up and I'm, my situation messed up too. And then now y'all both just playing pity on oh, each yep. other. You know what I'm yep. saying? Party, so it's like pity party. Keeping yeah, bro, keeping them people around you that's going that are like minded and uh, ain't gonna sit you sit there and let you complain. 
Wow. That that perspective, man, that's that's just such, such a testament because that's so hard to do. Yeah. It's, it's very hard to do. Like, how do you, like, in that situation, just how did you, how are you able to just keep such a great mindset even with all the bad shit? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's hard for you. You know what I'm saying? Just, you're human just like everyone else. So yeah. when, how'd you catch yourself, regardless of them, for you personally, when you're home by yourself, you're not having the season that you wanted or, you know, at the end of the day, people look at you as Sterling Shepard, the football player. Mm -hmm. Like, how did you catch yourself personally? Just, just knowing me, bro. Like, I, I know myself. I know I'm not just a football player. I know that, like, if this game was to end, I, I'm going to be all right. Mm -hmm. Like... The, the, there's nothing gonna be able to stop me as long as I got my mind set on something. It's like it's been that way my whole life, no matter what it was. Um, but yeah, if I if I caught myself slipping and going down to that path, mm -hmm. I mean, like I told you, my faith is 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 big for me. So Strong. you know, whether I had to sit there and watch a sermon or sit there and and read a bit of the Bible or whatever it is, that's what I do. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Hello, can I get two Whopper Junior meals? Damn, eighteen dollars. Do y'all have like payment plans, like layaway, like anything like that? Y'all don't got that? Where well, I could pay like maybe $5 right now, like $10 in a week or something like that? Layaway? At a fast food spot? Come on, bro. I've never seen or heard that in my life. That's crazy. Yeah, bro. Like, my pockets is hurting right now. I'm down bad. What you need to do is get on prize picks, bro. That's what you need to do if you're down bad like that. Bro, I ain't messing with no prize picks, boy. What I look like? Ah, let's go, man. Another win. Another win. That's like my sixth one all week. Prize picks, man. I told Gio get on prize picks. It's the best one to use. It's another win. Let's go. Man, there's no way this dude just hit on prize picks again. He's up like 5,000 on the week. Damn. Man, let me see how lucky I can get using this prize picks Jarvis keeps talking about. Shoot. Hopefully, it can get me a little bit of money so I could get rich. I never been on a jet before I started using prize picks. Shoot. I couldn't afford anything before I started using prize picks. Hit a couple more on the passing yards, a little less on the rushing yards. Next thing you know, I'm on a jet. I'm trying to make sure everybody eats. Go to prizepicks.com slash mercury and use code mercury. Get a $100 deposit on your first deposit. That's a $300. Again, go to prizepicks.com slash mercury and use code mercury to get $100 on your first deposit. You never know what that $100 is going to turn into. It could turn into this. And talk about, man, I got to bring it up, man. Talk about that infamous boat trip, man, that you guys took before yeah. that Packers game. That shit's crazy. She was young on that boat. Had the long hair shirt off. Man, they look, they're on the boat. Hair, Tim, young Tim, shit. Hey, Tim's, everything. Tim's. How yeah. did, did you guys think that picture would be what it was and, you know, everything that came after it? Explain that situation. I mean, we didn't put out the picture. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, we went there. Like, to be honest, everybody went out that night. It's just... It was New Some, Year's. Most guys went, yeah. New most Year's. guys went into the city. Mm. Me, O, Victor, and Roger, like we had the means to go get a, a PJ and go to Miami for the night. Yeah. Now we didn't know the PJ was going to have malfunctions and not be able to get back when, when we were supposed to be back. But mm -hmm. like, yeah, dog, we went. We just took it to <laughs> Miami, which you know, in hindsight, <laughs> all the distraction that it caused. Mm -hmm. Right. I would take that part about it back, but. I mean, we had a good time. Though. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah. we had a good no, time. We sure. just can't, and we had what two weeks before the playoff game. Like people can try that to... night don't affect nothing. Exactly. No, two but, weeks later, exactly. It, but it did affect. You know, everybody in the media was talking about it. Nobody mm -hmm. in the building was really talking about it. It was really the people on the in the media, and they made a big deal about it, which it was a distraction to the team. And so we knew that we were going to have to play a perfect game. Mm -hmm. yeah. If not, it was all going to be blamed on that. And we didn't play a perfect game, bro. We didn't play a good game at gonna, all. I was gonna ask you that. Yeah. yeah like, no. Do you think that picture? Like, are you? Do you regret that people will use that to be like, "Oh, this is why they lost." Uh, it's New York. No, nah, bro. That that's just the nature of the beast, dog. Mm -hmm. Like, you already knew that was what's gonna come with it. Like, we knew that, and and our coach broke it down to us. Coach Henry was like, "Man, listen, we got to be on our p's and q's. We gotta, we gotta come down with the hard catches. We gotta do that." And we just didn't go out there and play our best ball. Granted, yeah. it was negative, whatever. Yeah. Out there. At Lambo, yeah, at Lambo. But at I mean, night. It, it, there's no excuses, bro. It was what it was. We didn't play good, and uh, we knew that we was gonna catch heat for that, and and we did. Y'all had a good <laughs> time. They still ain't let it up. I'm the last one of the curse. What they say. <laughs> so yeah, look, I'm, the, I'm yeah, gone now. One, yeah, I'm gone now. Y'all better take it all the way now. So you gone? You know, there's a lot of speculation about. Oh, Shep's retiring, blah, blah, blah. And like, you ain't never really say, nah. yeah, yeah, I'm you ain't retiring. Saying, 
is this one of those situations where you're actually retiring or is it like I just might not be with the Giants right now, but I might be with another team. Like, what yeah. is the situation with, with what's going on right now? I think it's just it's too early to close the door right now yeah. on that. Um, obviously, I'm I'm content with what I've done in my career and, and where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it, I mean, it's a lot of other stuff that goes into whether I'm going to play or not. Like, in my family situation that's yep, that's sure. that's big for me bro like uh it has to make sense for me and my family mm -hmm. to to go do that like my family's stable here mm. right, so right, right. uh so many other decisions but I'm, I'm not gonna close that door this early you know what i mean we're right. we're a week or two out of the season mm -hmm. bro so uh yeah i'm not gonna for sure say that yet yeah if it comes and it makes sense then it makes sense yeah, if, and if not then and, i and did then what i need then to i'm do. cool with that yeah i'm Shit. cool with that like i've taken care of myself financially uh i have a lot of other opportunities out there Hell um that have been presented to me mm -hmm. so you know what i mean as long as you've done those those things right there and you like that, that's what i learned yeah, from, yeah. from vic and then like you set that up then you be cool. It's those guys that are like, man, what am I about to do? Right, right, like, right. Man, I ain't, it's, I ain't got that much cheddar. I didn't spent, spent my bread. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? They stressing, but like, bro, taking care of those things while you're playing is huge, and that's what I would relate to, like younger guys. Yeah, and don't, don't get it twisted. I was at every Giants camp. Shep was shredding everyone. Like, yeah, I just gotta put that out there because, bro. like. The, it, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I just you keep it being, that, keep man. it being. Bro, listen, I gotta keep it being, man. I, yeah. could, I could be that dude, you know, that dude that is posting all the practice clips, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, on, yeah. on IG. I mm -hmm. just don't get down like that, but like it, it but it's a lot more that goes into playing too. Mm -hmm. Like I was explaining to y'all before the show started, like you got to be in it mentally too, absolutely. Yep. And uh, like, yeah, I feel like I can go physically, but like. You also got to be in there mentally because at this level, if you ain't in it mentally, bro, you get ate up. Yeah. And, sure. and Shep, for you, selfishly, you know, stepping back, like, you know, you're not coming out saying you're retiring or not. But I just want to know, like, looking back on your career, your professional career, are you happy? Do you feel like there's more meat on the bone? Like, where? how do you feel personally? Bro, I'm, I'm happy. And the reason why I say I'm happy is because I got to live my dream, dog. There's so many people that ain't. Ain't been able to say that they lived their dream. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? So I did that. I played this game at the highest level. And uh, it, it didn't go the way that I wanted to. But, like, how often do things go the way you plan it to go? They don't right, never right. really go the way you plan it to go. Mm -hmm. It's his plan. So, like, like I said, I've taken care of what I needed to take care of. And that's all I can control. So, you know, I'm I'm happy with whichever way it goes. Do I feel like I can give the game some more? Yeah, I do. Yeah, absolutely. But, uh yeah, bro, I'm I'm content. And I say bro. that only because, like, no bias, like, just watching you, being around you, knowing the football player that you are, like, bro, you can go. You're still that dude, been that dude. And it's just like, I feel like personally, you're one of the more underrated receivers that doesn't get the respect and credit that they deserve mm -hmm. based on whether that's injuries that held you back or things out of your control. Yeah. So I just want to know personally, like, bro, I know, you know what you could do. And I, I know what you could do, but mm -hmm. that's why I wanted to ask that. That's all. Yeah, appreciate you. No, no doubt. But, you know, taking a step back away from football, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, it's bigger than this. It's family, right? You know, talk about your mom and the impact that she's had on your life. And, you know, you got two beautiful daughters, man. Just, you know, talk about just that, those girls in your life and what they mean to you. Yeah. I mean, family is everything to me, dog, because, you know, people come and go out of your life. But, like, one thing that always stays true is your family. And uh, for my mom especially, bro, like, my father passed. She... Like I told y'all, she strapped on the shoulder pads, mm -hmm. helmet, mm -hmm. and was like, bro, she took a day where she maybe cried and stayed in the bed. But after that day, it was like a total different woman. It was like, I got three kids, I got a raise. Damn. And psh, that's what she did, dog. She she straight up, like, I, I, I didn't see her cry again. I didn't see right. her cry again. And, you know, like, obviously, we would go through emotions as, as kids. Right. Well, she was there for each and every one of us in, in, in different ways. And then all the way throughout my life, bro, she, I, I didn't really go without. And it's because she busted her ass, bro. Yeah. Mom, she, yeah. She, was, she was working, grinding. And so, you know, that was one of my, that's what motivated me for a majority of my career. Like, I feel like your why kind of shifts as you play. Mm -hmm. But she was my why for a long time, bro, because of everything I, 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 I witnessed her go through. Yeah. Like, and now, and now that I have kids, 
now I really get an understanding of how hard it is, bro. I yeah. got two girls and I'm like, I don't know how my mama did it with three kids going to work, then coming back yeah. home and then being mom and dad. Damn. Like, bro, that's hard business. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you don't really understand it as a little kid. But as you get older, you really understand it. So, yeah, man, I mean, I, I don't know where I would be without her. And uh, she's the reason why I'm here today. Moms are superheroes, man. Yeah, and especially, like, once you go through something, it's easy for you to be like, look, I can make it through this because I've seen my mom make it through way harder. Mm -hmm. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Bro. So it's like kind of puts life into perspective. Man, what, G, for real, like, she the definition of strength. And yeah. Sh like, somebody strong to me. Like that's the definition for me. Damn. Yeah. But you're also, like you said, Shep the dad, yeah. right? So talk about the impact that your two daughters have on you, like being a father and everything that comes with it and everything that you teach them, like you setting the mold for them. Like how does mm -hmm. how does that impact you? Yeah, man. It's it, it, obviously like having girls at, from what I've heard, cause I, I ain't never had a boy, but like, <laughs> it, like, yeah, my boys that have had boys, mm -hmm. it, like it's different when you have girl, yeah. um, you know, it brings out a softer side in you, especially like in the line of work that we in, mm -hmm. like it's, it's constantly like, I'm about to show you who big dog, yeah, wh whatever it may man. be, it's macho man, but you gotta have a soft side with them girls and they just bring it out of you naturally. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I want, I want to show them, you know, what a, a man looks like you know what i mean you you are what they look at as an example so on my day-to-day -day life i try to you know i try to i try to show them that dog yeah like in every way possible mm -hmm. you know i'm I'm getting them flowers just because so they know what they deserve yeah, yeah. so they know what it is That's you know amazing. what i mean big dog if you come in here you hey, you're gonna have to get me flowers on the regular because <laughs> right because my right. daddy he be giving me flowers every week whatever right. it is right. you know yeah. what i'm saying right. you set you the better, standard. yeah you better come with it because you know, this is what he does for me, and that's what I, that's the way I want them to view me. You know, that's dope. Man. That's amazing, man. Just yeah. being a a black dad, man, and girl dad at yeah. that, like, it's definitely different. I don't got no kids. I'm just saying, I could just being around you, being around all of our friends who got kids. Like, you definitely, bro. You just take it to another level. Like, bro, he's just yeah. such a great dad. I'd be sitting back like, damn, he's a great dad. Yeah, and yeah. just like. And that's what I'm saying. Like your your why changes, bro. So yeah. when I had when I had Callie, I remember when I first figured out I was about to have Callie. It just gives you a a burst, bro. Yeah, like a burst. Like oh, bet. Yeah, look, yeah. okay, let, let's go get to it. I I went for like 140 that next game, mm -hmm. just <laughs> knowing like man, I got to get to it. Right, I got I, I got a mouth to feed, bro. It's 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 honestly scary being a parent. Mm -hmm. You know what sure. I mean? Just having to like you got to care for a, a life. Yeah, no, you know so. Fast. I feel that this is my son right here, so I feel Shut the fuck up. Shut up, man. This my son, so I'll be playing, playing that sometimes, man, for and, real. And for you, like, quick question, you know, when does the needle change in terms of, you know, your whole life, you were selfish with your career and the things that you had to accomplish and sacrifice? When, when you have kids now, for you, making sure their dreams and goals that they want accomplished, when does that change? For, when did that change for you, or has it changed? Or making sure that they reach their goals and dreams rather than, you know, you... Yeah. And yours. I, I just think it, if you're a good parent, that just naturally happens, bro. Absolutely. Like, you know, all the things in life that uh, are going to are going to cost whatever, you know, they got to go to school. That's something that's very important. Uh, that's been important in my family is us going to school and finishing school. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know how expensive that can be. Like I've, I've made financial um, changes just so that I can make sure that my girls are going to be uh, going to be straight mm -hmm. when it comes to to anything. You know yeah. that they going to want to have a nice car. Like you have to make those you have to make those changes and you know, you selfish when you're young. You can go out and go party and stuff like that. But like I said, them seeing me is the, what's most important to them and that's what's most important to me. I got to be around them, dog. So Absolutely. Yeah. Proud of you, man. Yeah, man. If, for if, real. If you could describe your life in one word or phrase up until this point, what would you say? You can't use adversity though, because everybody uses that. And shit. why? Everybody uses everyone adversity. Use, everyone yeah, uses that. We can't, yeah, we can't use adversity. Could I say like roller coaster? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because like, like, life for me at least, and for most people that I've talked to, it, it, it's up and down, bro. Mm -hmm. But like trying to find that steady and. Um, yeah, I mean, trying to uh, just it's, it's full of um, overcoming things, bro. And yeah. so it's never going to stop. And once you get it through your head that, 
you know, you're going to have your ups and your downs, but you're going to find a way through. Yeah. You live a lot, a lot simpler life and a lot, life, a lot happier. Life, life is there all about go. peaks and yeah. valleys, man. Yeah, yeah it is. weathering bro. those storms. Yeah, so roller coaster. But no. we're going to keep it steady. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Our staple question that we always ask, you know, this show is called Second Win, mm-hmm. right? And for anyone who didn't take away anything from whatever you said, I want them to be able to take something away from this question. So for someone going through something in life or someone who might want to be the next chef, what is some advice you give them to help them catch their second win? Like kind of get to that next level in their life. Yeah. Uh, dang, that's a good one. Um, I would just say stay consistent, man. Like, yeah. uh, like I said, you're going through at curve balls are going to be thrown at you. Um, but just stay consistent. And if you got a goal and then you want to achieve it, don't let anything stand in your way with that. Right. Like, right. be strong and, and surround yourself by the people that are going to push you towards that goal, not people that are going to bring you down and drag you down from it. So uh, that's what I've tried to do. And I ain't, I ain't been successful at it my whole life. But, like, um, you know, I've learned throughout through through the way and uh, been, able, been blessed and gotten to where I've gotten right now. It's beautiful, man. Beautiful, yeah. man. Young shit. Yeah. Shep on the pod, Second man. Second win family, man. Go <laughs> yes, ahead and hit that like button, that comment, comment button, that subscribe button. Come tell on, your man. auntie, tell your cousin, yeah. pet tell your cat, pet, pet, pet fish, pet fish, cat, whatever yeah. you need to Care tell. You tell, and, tell and, and we got and we got some special stuff coming we for you. Yes, yes, sir. Real deal. We got some special stuff coming for you. Real deal. We got some special stuff coming Make sure y'all hop in my DMs if you want to talk about it. Yeah. ugly. I'm just playing. I got a girl that I really, I mean. Second win family. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all, man. Young shit. Yeah. Appreciate y'all.